Implications of Makimoto's Wave by Tsugiyo Makimoto, President of SSIS. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about Makimoto's Wave. This wave concept was first introduced in the UK in 1991. So more than 20 years have passed since then. But I believe that the basic concept is still alive today and it provides with us valuable insight into the future. This figure shows what is known as Makimoto's wave. I discovered the cyclical nature of the semiconductor industry as shown here in 1987. A few years later, I got an interview of David Manners of the UK. He was very much interested in this concept and wrote a big article on the Electronics Weekly in January of 91. When I read his article, I was surprised because the wave was named as Makimoto's Wave. So I think the credit of Makimoto's Wave has to be shared with David. As you know, the transistor was invented in 1947 and the semiconductor industry started to rise about 10 years after this invention or around 1957. Main products of the first decade were transistors and diode and these products were standard products as shown here. Since then, the industry trend has alternated direction between standard and custom roughly every 10 years. The next decade from 67 was characterized by custom area size for TVs and calculators, and the chip was custom designed in order to minimize the chip size. With the emergence of microprocessor and memory, the industry trend changed to standard direction around 77 time frame. Then with the emergence of ASIC or application specific IC, a new trend of customization started in the decade starting from 87. In the 97 time frame, a new trend started toward the standard direction with the emergence of field programmable devices. When I got this idea in 1987, the first portion of the wave from 57 to 87 was the past history of the industry. And the last portion of the wave from 87 to 07 was the forecast of the future trend. From today's viewpoint, it can be said that the forecast proved to be true. This is the semiconductor pendulum to explain why the industry trends alternate directions. Suppose that a new device like microprocessor or FPGA is introduced to the market. The pendulum will be pushed to the direction of standard. However, if it goes too far, there will be reaction forces acting to the pendulum, such as need for differentiation, need for higher performance and lower power. Then the pendulum will be pulled back to the opposite direction. On the other hand, if the pendulum goes too far to the custom direction, the situation will be reversed. In this way, the pendulum has kept swinging between standard and custom, and it will keep swinging in the future as well. This table shows the patterns of semiconductor innovations. The process of innovation is quite complex, but it can be categorized into three patterns as shown here. 
The first category is a disruptive innovation such as the inventions of transistor and IC. The second category is exponential innovation known as Moore's Law. And the third category is the cyclical innovation like Makimoto's Wave. In forecasting the future trends of the chip industry, we need to take all of these factors into consideration. In the next slides, I will show you how Makimoto's Wave is used for predicting the future. This is the extended version of Makimoto's Wave. I believe the Wave concept is still alive and the Wave is extended two more decades up to 2027. As you can see here, the current decade is characterized by SOC or System on Chip and SIP or System in Package in the custom direction. Now the question is, what will be the next trend in the decade after SOC and SIP? My forecast is that the new trend will be the standard direction as shown here. Some background for this reasoning are summarized in the bottom. Firstly, the initial cost for developing a chip in this decade would be very high. And secondly, the market would be quite diversified and fragmented. At the same time, there will be two major drivers towards the standard direction. Firstly, thanks to the Moore's law, a chip will be able to integrate various multifunctions, including microprocessor, DSP, memory, and FPGA. And the chip can cover a wide range of applications with a great deal of flexibility. Secondly, the emergence of the high-performance non-volatile RAM would impact the way of chip design, providing even higher flexibility and lower power features. I name the new trend as HFSI for highly flexible superintegration. How to realize the HFSI would be a big challenge to semiconductor people. At the same time, it would be a big challenge for computer and IT people how to best utilize its potentiality. Ladies and gentlemen, the chip technology will keep advancing in search of the betterment of our future society. There will be a very interesting and challenging future ahead of us. Thank you for your attention.